While some scientists engineer shiny new consumer goods for an eager public, Harvard psychologist B.F. Skinner seeks nothing less than the engineering of human nature. In experiments with subjects as simple as pigeons, Skinner declares that with the right social engineering, we can create a new breed of human being. Skinner is firmly in the behaviorist tradition pioneered by John Watson in the 1920s. Like Watson, Skinner contends that with the right tools, we can predict and control behavior. Skinner really inherited uh, the, the mantle from Watson of behaviorism in this country. But it's kind of interesting to think about how there's a subtle difference uh, in the way they went about it. Watson, as we know, ended up becoming an advertising executive, ended up embracing the American value system as it existed. Skinner was different. Skinner was a visionary. Skinner felt that through behaviorism, he could influence the world towards a greater humanity, not meet humanity where it was, but take humanity to a new place through the principles of behaviorism. Picking up where Watson left off, Skinner wants to do the rigorous science to prove that environment is everything. Change the environment, he argues, and you can change the individual. Or in Skinner's case, the pigeon. Skinner himself was a born gadgeteer. Uh, he had, in his own early years, uh, as a boy, for example, he developed ways of sorting ripe, I think it was cranberries, from unripe cranberries. He invented a cannon that would shoot things over his neighbor's fence. This was the kind of man he was. He was developing new ways to do everyday things in ways that were more comfortable, more efficient. During World War II, Skinner had developed a pigeon guidance device for the U.S. military. While the Russians had dogs carrying bombs and the Swedes had seals to blow up mines, Skinner had a plan of his own. Teaching pigeons to guide missiles to an enemy target. At the time, however, the military had no missiles to guide. But Skinner's pigeon research did not go to waste. He develops a system called operant conditioning to prove that a behavior will be repeated by a subject when rewarded. Repetition leads to reinforcement. Reinforcement to changes in behavior. This hungry pigeon is moving about more or less at random. Sometimes it turns its head to the left. When it does, we reinforce that movement by giving the pigeon access to a dish of grain. Skinner then waits for it to turn further. Again, more food. Ultimately, the pigeon will turn in a complete circle, having learned that only when he turns will he be rewarded. What Skinner was able to do in very carefully controlled studies with animal models was they demonstrate that whole chains of behaviors could be built step by step so that literally you could teach a pigeon to do complicated behaviors that no one would have predicted possible. And Skinner believes that if it works for pigeons, why not people? In Skinner's mind, behavior is behavior, up and down the evolutionary scale, and it is all learned. One of the great successes is in education. People are taught to do more complicated tasks than anyone had thought possible by breaking down behavior into small steps and giving positive reinforcement along the way. The essence of Skinner's work was that we could manipulate the environment in ways that would permit us to produce any kind of behavior that we wished, and we could develop individuals in ways that made every possible future um, open to them. The idea that anything is possible 